right. So, good evening. This uh, conference will now be recorded. Good evening. And welcome to the uh, City 11 Worth Planning Commission for the regular session of uh, Monday, January the 4th, 2021. I note that there are four uh, commissioners present. We have one commissioner online, so I think we have a quorum, so I think we can go ahead and begin. Yep. First thing I'd like to talk about is, um, can we approve the minutes from our meeting in December? Um, is there anything, any additions or anything that didn't make the meeting, the minutes that we got prior to this meeting? Nope, no additions or changes. All right. Right. Commissioners, any questions or concerns about the minutes from the 7 December meeting? If there are no questions, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes. I still move that those minutes of the uh, our meeting of December 7th be approved as written. Great. Second? I second. All right. All in favor say aye or raise your right hand. Aye. 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 Thank you. It's passed. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So we have two items to discuss today. Uh, for those of you who are sitting in at home, we're going to have a discussion between the city planners, the commissioners, and the applicant. Um, when we're finished answering and answering questions, I will open it to the public, and so I will let you know when uh, we'll take your concerns. I ask that you, if you have a concern, if you would just use the chat function and let um, our city planner know that you'd like to talk, and then she'll let us know when it's your turn to, to talk. All right, so first item of new business is 2021 slash zero one rezoning for uh, 1440 and 1460 Quincy Street. Can we have the staff report, please? Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you said, this is a rezoning request for the properties at 1440 and 1460 Quincy Street. This is a request to rezone the properties from R19 medium density single family residential to R16 high density single family residential. Uh, the two properties total approximately 4.76 acres, and there is an existing single-family house on the property address that's 1460 right now. So the rezoning is being requested in order to allow for um, the development of a single-family subdivision with a proposed total of 18 lots with a layout, a cul-de-sac layout, largely similar to the property to the east. Um, the rezoning would allow for uh, slightly smaller lots. The R19 zoning district uh, requires a minimum of 9,000 square foot per lot with 75 feet in width. The proposed R16 zoning requires a minimum of 6,000 square feet per lot with a minimum width of 48 feet. So the plat that has been submitted for this development as I said, shows a total of 18 lots that do have an average of 9,647 square feet per lot, with the largest lot being 12,516 square feet and the smallest lot being 8,185 feet. The subdivision just to the east, as I said, is largely similar in layout. It just has two fewer lots for a total of 16 lots in that subdivision. And the average lot size in that subdivision is 10,836 square feet, so about 1,000 square feet more than uh, what's proposed here. So the Development Review Committee did review this project at the December 17th, 2020 meeting and discussed a number of items related mainly to utilities, drainage, and improvements to Quincy Street. Utilities are available to the property, and easements will be needed to connect those utilities through the subdivision to the east. Um, the grading on the lots as they are developed will need to address the stormwater issues. I know the stormwater drainage has been a concern of many of the neighbors that we have heard from. Um, with what we've heard is that stormwater tends to run from this property onto their properties to the east. As this subdivision would be developed, it would be required to account for any stormwater on this property and direct it to the stormwater drainage system on this property as it's developed. Um, so that drainage system would be designed by an engineer. It would, it would actually reduce the amount of stormwater that runs onto other properties um, since any development is not allowed to di divert stormwater away from it. So um, the neighbors to the east would likely see a pretty marked improvement in what they currently experience. 
So as I said, um, we have received some calls and comments uh, from the proper, nearby property owners with concerns about the storm drainage um, and some con concerns about the narrowness of the streets. Um, the, street, the streets are pretty narrow in that area um, uh, of the neighborhood, as I'm sure a lot of you drove through it and saw for yourselves. Um, the developer of this property would be required to improve Quincy Street along the frontage of this property, so widen it, um, potentially adding sidewalks, so um, addressing the problem as it adjoins this property. Um, they can't, we couldn't expect them to do all of Quincy Street, but they would be addressing it uh, for this particular section. So um, previously there had been a request to rezone this property um, to R16 with a lot, a lot layout similar to what you have seen tonight back in 2007. Um, that was recommended for approval by the Planning Commission at that time. Uh, back in 2007, there was a valid protest petition that was submitted by the neighbors. And so when this got to second hearing um, ordinance with the City Commission, um, it failed at that point due to the protest petition that had been submitted. So just uh, moving on to the conditions of determination, I'll just run through those for you. Um, the first, the character of the neighborhood. The subject property is occupied by one single family home. To the north, east, and south are other single family subdivisions with lots um, that are ranging in size from slightly smaller to si slightly larger than what's proposed. And to the west are several large lot residential parcels, which are each over three acres in size. Uh, the zoning and the use of nearby properties. So immediately adjacent properties are zoned R19, medium density single family residential. Beyond the immediately adjacent properties to the north, north, east, and west are properties that are zoned R16, high density single family residential. And to the northwest is property that's zoned RMF, which is multifamily residential. Uh, the majority of surrounding properties are developed with single family homes, similar to what's proposed here. The next is the suitability of the subject property for the uses to which it's been restricted. Uh, the subject property, again, is currently zoned medium density single family and the property is uh, appropriate for single family uses. The next condition is the extent to which the removal of the restrictions will detrimentally affect nearby property. Uh, so again, this should have little to no detrimental effect on nearby property. The majority of the concerns expressed to staff by the neighbors regarding this proposal involve the stormwater drainage that currently occurs from this property onto properties located to the east. Um, the development, as I said, of this proposed subdivision should positively impact any stormwater issues that are currently experienced as the developed lots will be required to direct stormwater runoff to the proposed cul-de-sac where it would be captured by the stormwater drainage system that would be put into place. The next condition is the length of time that the subject properties remained vacant as zoned. Uh, this, the property has always been a single family or vacant in nature. The next condition is the relative gain to economic development, public health, safety, and welfare by the reduction of the value of the landowner's property as compared to the hardship imposed by such <coughs> reduction upon the individual landowner. Uh, the proposed rezoning would have a positive effect upon the economic vitality of Leavenworth by increasing the available housing stock to residents. The next is the recommendations of staff. Staff does recommend that the item be approved. The next is the conformance of the requested change to the adopted or recognized comprehensive land use plan being utilized by the city. Uh, this area is identified as appropriate for medium density residential uses, which is um, defined in the future land use plan as 6,000 to 9,000 square feet of lot area per dwelling unit. So uh, as I said, this actually does meet that the average lot area is a little bit over that 9,000 square feet. Um, so again, that would meet the um, adopted future land use plan. And then the final condition is any other factors that may be relevant to the proposed amendment. And there are no other factors of note. So uh, we do, as you are aware, have the accompanying preliminary plat um, for discussion tonight. So um, you can center your discussion around just sort of the project as a whole. Um, take a vote on the rezoning first and then pending that vote um, that would dictate um, being able to or not able to take a vote on the preliminary plat. Right. Thank you. So we do have the applicant here in the audience. Uh, they can speak 
um, and give you sort of an overview of their process, and I can answer any questions for you, as can they. Um, so if you have any questions for me, and we can let the applicant come up to the podium if you would like to hear from them. All right, thank you. Um, first off, any questions for staff? Yes, <laughs> maybe? Not for staff. Okay. All right, if there are no questions from staff, then I guess we'll open it to our, the applicant. Uh, so we have questions for the applicant. Uh, the applicant will approach the podium, identify your name, and write as your a name and address, please. Do you want the mask left on? Um, what do you think? Yes, please. Okay, sorry, yes. No, different rules, different places. So yeah. I want to make sure. Uh, Josh Office, I re represent LBH, LBH Development, which is the current owner of the two parcels um, in question, and the hopefully developer of the proposed subdivision uh, in question tonight. Is there anything that uh, you'd like to add to the report as provided to us by staff? Anything that might not have made the, the notes that we've got? No, I think the uh, staff did an excellent job of describing the project. Um, the purpose here is to actually get from 16 to 18 lots, which two lots doesn't seem like a whole bunch unless you're talking about a number less than, basically it's 12.5% difference in the, in the number of lots in the subdivision. Costs are pretty well fixed. Uh, the idea here is to bring these houses in at a more affordable price point. Um, it's sad when 250 to 275 is a more affordable price point, but that's kind of where we're at. Uh, so uh, we're trying to do everything we can uh, from the lot all the way through the end to reduce the overall price of the homes. And this request is part of that. All right. uh, and just to verify, you are talking just single family homes. There's no multiplexes, no duplexes, no quadruplexes, right? No, just single family homes. And then your intent is to build them and sell them, not rent, I mean, to sell, right? Yes, okay. yes, no rent. At least not it's, from yeah, our standpoint. Not from your yes. standpoint, yeah. I mean, what the, <clears throat> an owner does is that. All right. Uh, other questions? I do have some questions. I, I'm very familiar with the area. I lived at 1101 Quincy for two uh, and a half years. So I'm very familiar with this area since I lived very close to where you're developing. I just want to clarify some things that I've read on that is that you're aware of the sewer problems, you're aware of the water runoff, and you've got a plan in place to address that issue, to improve it greater than where it is now, correct? I've got a plan in place to handle this, the stormwater runoff on my site, uh, which if I have, if our site, as has been suggested, is causing runoff onto the adjacent property owners to these, my plan would address that because okay. uh, as a developer, runoff, I'm not allowed to put my stormwater runoff yeah, onto somebody else's property. In that proposed 16 to 18 area. Right. What would be the approximate price of the 16 to 18 homes that you're building there? What would be the price of them, roughly? Our hope, um, and lumber prices and a whole bunch of things are working right. against us currently, mm -hmm. uh, but our hope is to stay south of 250 if we can. Okay. Um, I know that doesn't seem entry level, but Got as it. best we can, that's our, that's our hope. At this you, point. you made a comment the infrastructure has no undue burden, so you've looked at the existing infrastructure with utilities and everything in place, and it will not require, it has existing capacity to handle what you're doing now without any increase from the city, is that correct? That's our understanding, yes. You made a comment that doing this development with these 16, 18 lots and making the improvements you are will have a positive overall impact. When you make that comment, I just would like to appreciate you giving me some uh, characteristics or some fact features, it's going to have overall impact. Give me one or give our, our commission two or three areas that you would see improvement that with house value, quality of life, or when you made that comment, clarify that please, will you? Sure, and I, you know, I, I do have a background as an appraiser, so uh, that's sort of a, a statement I, as I was looking at it, um, you know, you're talking new home stock in an area with home prices varying from <clears throat> below 120s all the way up to the 250s, 275, depending on what you look at. Those are Zillow numbers. Um, so we're going to be building at the upper um, end of the home mark, you know, the value of the homes in the neighborhood. Uh, hopefully, we're building family homes, so we'll bring new families to the community. So as you go to quality of life, you know, younger, hopefully younger families in the community or in that neighborhood. Um, and then, you know, at 18 in houses, at roughly $4,000 a house in Real estate taxes per year, you're talking $72,000 in annual revenue additional, and that's USD 453 uh, taxes, not what's going on in West Glen and down south where that's actually in the, in the Lansing School District. So I see that as a positive to, to Leavenworth, the city, and the school district. 
Thank you. From what I understand, the people that have some concerns in this area are very <coughs> concerned with the water runoff and the water. I know you addressed that issue mm -hmm. with sewerage and water runoff. So again, I, that appears to be a major concern to the people who live surrounding this area. And you're assuring us or telling us that what you, what you control and have access to, you have a plan with the water runoff and sewerage direction to handle that problem and probably increase, make it better, you're saying, than where they're at now with water. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, I, I mean, the staff can speak to you. I, no development is allowed to basically have water runoff to an adjacent property, so I have to address the, the stormwater runoff. So if they're currently experiencing runoff from my tract, that would be, I mean, that would be improved with us um, developing the property with catch basins and the stormwater system as, as designed by our engineer. I'll just I'll let you know, too. We've got Brett Napier <laughs> on the line, who's the engineer for the project. If you had any specific questions about that for him, he could probably address that, too. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, Chris, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I, have a, no, I have a concern, also. I, water runoff's everybody's issue in the city. We, we know we have those problems. But another one that really gets me is, 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 is the traffic issue. I mean, there, there, we appear to already have a traffic problem on Quincy, and it just seems to me that adding more houses is adding more traffic to that area. And uh, do you have any plans to help, you know, uh, fix that coming out of your neighborhood? Or um, because, it, from what I understand, it, it, it is an issue out in that area. Yeah, the street in front of our property is fairly narrow. No, and it's mm -hmm. a, no curbs or gutters. Um, as I understand, and we would plan to anyway, quite frankly, to improve the overall aesthetics of our development, uh, would be to improve Quincy. And you can see, well, it's hard to see from that aerial, but Quincy is developed with curbs, gutters, and a, and a wider street in front of the immediately adjacent subdivision now. So it sort of stops right at Patterson. Um, our intention would be to, to carry those improvements on to the west line of our property, widening the street, adding curbs and gutters. It sounds like adding sidewalk. Um, to improve the overall, not just the aesthetics, but making ingress, egress to our subdivision and, and on through that area easier. Okay. You, you mentioned sidewalks too, right? I, that's what it sounds like. Okay. <laughs> yeah, our, our public works department has requested that. Yeah, okay. I, I think okay. it's been made pretty clear that's going to happen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioners at home, Linda, Tom, not Tom. So um, I noticed from the previous meeting that there was a, one, or one of the comments from a, one of the folks that lived to the subdivision just to the east is the problem with power or electricity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that they've, they've t reached out to the energy company to try to fix their problems. Yeah, Josh could address that. Um, as with any development that occurs, they will be they have to coordinate with the utility companies, and that does have to be addressed. So. Josh, you could speak. If, I'm not sure if you've spoken with Evergy yet or... Yeah, we've had preliminary discussions yeah. with Evergy about there's actually a, a pole in the front of our property and then, and then working with them to, to determine, yeah, basically power usage in, in our improvements that need to be made. To, to Obviously, we don't want to build 18 houses that don't have power. Uh, <laughs> no, so Evergy. We want to, we want to, we're working with Evergy to make sure that we have the, the necessary power out there. Yeah, I just, I guess, I guess, I guess, and it's not clear in the notes what what the issue is with the, why there why the power in that subdivision would be an issue, and that hasn't been fixed by the energy company. So yeah, I'm not you're, sure you're, you're going to take care of yours, and that's good. You're not going to yeah. put it, uh, you're not going to put any burden on the on the on the uh, subdivision next to you. So um, I guess the issue would really be with Evergy to see whether they could fix whatever that issue is. And it's yeah, all underground for right. our utilities. Yeah, no, all underground. You can transformers in between two if you don't mind another question, I thought it was the issue with the people with concerns with water and all. Do you envision when you build those homes that they would all have sump pumps built put in? I would depend. I think we we'll obviously always put pits in. I don't know that it would depend on. Okay. I'm just wondering about the ground yeah. and the water existing there in your area. And I don't, you know, we're, early, we're fairly early in the process with our engineer on determining you know, what we're going to need in terms of cross grading and, and those sorts of things to make sure that we deal with any water problems that are there. Um, you know, so yeah, it, that's to be determined. I, I think another potential concern, at least if I'm reading between the lines, is um, 
with regards to the people to the north looking down into your subdivision. Any, I mean, I, I can't see from your design. Are you thinking about leaving as many trees along the edges to the north and to the east to kind of provide a, a visual barrier between your subdivision and the subdivision to the east and north? Yes. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, I, yes, our, our intent is, yes, is we're going through the, this process and working with our engineer and we start the grubbing on the, to try to leave as many of the trees as a, a barrier on the west and the north um, mm -hmm. as we possibly can. That sort of works both ways with, with new homes and, and what they're looking at as well. So, yeah, trees are aesthetically pleasing. We want to make sure we can leave as many of them as we possibly can. All right. Thank you. <coughs> One more shot. Questions from commissioners? Commissioners at home? All right. If we have no more questions for the applicant or the staff, I will open the, this meeting to the public. Uh, again, if you have a question or concern or you want to be heard, <coughs> please... Uh, Put your, you know, type a message into the chat, chat room, and uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you. Yeah, if you have a comment, just uh, type into the chat that you have a comment, uh, just so we can keep track of who wants to speak, and then I'll, we can call on people in order um, as you want to speak. Did you take a vote to open the public hearing? Did I? I just realized that. I don't think you did. Do I need a vote? Yes. Oh. Aren't they supposed to? Oh. Do they not? No. Oh. Okay. Oh. That would be I'm a over, first I'm vote. overthinking it. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think City Commission. City that. Commission. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, now we've got a number of guests online. Do we have anybody that wants to speak? You can type into the chat or you can unmute yourself. Please identify your, give us your name and your address before you begin your comments, please. Okay, we have a Robin that would like to speak. Robin, you can go ahead. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Robin, if you could give us your last name and your address. Hassett, H A S A. I live 1324 South 15th Street. Okay, thank you. You can go ahead with your comments. I've got a, you know, I've got a concern with with the. Uh, well, I, I hear one thing from the city, and then I then I hear something else, and so so I hear that that there's a a huge drainage problem in this area, and yet we we live on a, the section of 15th Street between. Kansas and Quincy, which is, uh, I believe the entrance to this new cul-de-sac would be right up the street from me uh, and, and my wife where we live here. Uh, you know, between that and then we look at our street, we've got no curbs, we've got no sidewalks. Uh, the drainage uh, is, is horrendous. Uh, I think I am the only house on the street that has uh, a drainage ditch out in front. And I think I'm probably the only house on the street that I have a driveway to only because uh, several years back when I bought a new driveway, I obtained a permit where they told me I had to put in a driveway tube. So I am the only house on the block on both sides of the street that has a driveway tube and a drain addition in front of their house. Nobody else does. And we have a lot of uh, transient families in the neighborhood, Army, uh, they military, I'll, I'll say. Uh, they buy a lot of houses around here. They live here for a couple, two or three years. They have children. They have dogs. They walk up and down the street every day. <clears throat> and I am concerned about what the influx of all this additional traffic is going to bring. Because right now we've got people flying up and down this road. Uh, this South 15th Street is the nearest north-south uh, thoroughfare to connect Quincy with Ohio. And then Ohio then, of course, then turning west will take you up to Compton, which is a terrible road. Uh, anybody in this area that knows that. And if you go east, then you go to 10th Avenue. <clears throat> and uh, I'm, I'm just afraid this, this, all this additional traffic is gonna be in this, in this neighborhood that currently is not designed to handle uh, that kind of traffic load.
It sounds to me like we're, we're, we're putting the the, uh, the car in front of the horse on this one. It, sounds, it, it seems to me like the streets should be improved, drainage should be improved. Uh, for safety's sake, uh, adequate uh, places for people to walk uh, should be put in place before we start cramming a bunch of houses into this, this patch of ground up the street. And and then having all this traffic into the neighborhood. That's my concern. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, do we have anybody else that I wanted have, to? Oh, okay. Well, I do have one I'd like to say. Uh, anybody that lives in this neighborhood understands that we are probably in the worst power grid in the city of Leavenworth. Our power was out for a couple hours again Sunday morning. Uh, Evergy's been good to get it back on again, but uh, you know, we're going to start putting, what, what's Evergy got to say about any of this? Are they going to do anything? Are they going to improve this grid? I'm not aware what Evergy, what we haven't, uh, I don't think we have a representative here from Evergy. Uh, no, we don't. Well, this is the awfulest power grid in this neighborhood. It has been since we've lived here, and we moved here in 2002. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, did we have anybody else that wanted to speak? It doesn't look like we do. All right, so if there are no other public comments, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, last shot for commissioners to ask questions of either the applicant or the staff. I do have a question. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. It's zoned. You could build there now. And you could build how many houses there now? 16. 16. And you can build after the rezone 18. Right. So, I mean, when we're talking about traffic, we're talking about two extra vehicles, two extra families, yeah. if the traffic was an issue, because again, tomorrow you could start building on the current zone. So, I just want to make that point. Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, not much different. No, got it. Yeah. It's two to four, right? Okay, and I, I will just say when the commission gets to the point of taking a vote, um, Commissioner or Chairman Burke, if you could just do a roll call vote since we do have a couple of commissioners online um, and just even for the commissioners here, if you could just do a roll call and call everybody by name just okay. so we can make sure we get that correct for the record. Thank you. All right. Again, uh, commissioners at home, any thoughts? I'm looking at you. Shake your head. No, yes. Nope. All right. Uh, so at this point, we have three options with regards to this uh, rezoning request. We can recommend approval of the rezoning request from R19 to R16 to the City Commission. We can recommend denial of the rezoning request, or we can table the issue for additional information or consideration. Um, I'll, we can have a discussion. I'll take a motion. I make a motion to recommend approval of the rezoning request. All right. We have a, recommend, I, a recommendation for approval. I'm sorry, I didn't. No, with, I mean, if you need a, some feedback on that, I'll be glad to give that after this. All right. So it's been motioned. Uh, made, the motion has been made. Do I have a second? A second to uh, accept the, the approval for rezoning. Right, well, I guess you have an opportunity to go ahead. It would appear that some of the other commissioners have got some concerns. Yeah, just, just again, we kind of addressed the, the traffic, which was of a concern, which, again, we're talking about two more houses. So I think that concern is minimalized. Stormwater is being addressed. Um, improvements to Quincy will take place based on this. Um, there's still single-family homes. We're not talking about apartment structures or multifamilies or anything like we have in the past. Um, Approximate lots from six to 9,000 square feet lot dwelling. Um, again, you're changing of zoning, but you're only changing 
to property um, being a, being a, being added to that. She works for the and Linda. And then uh, we the, don't even know. the uh, area comps. Again, if we're building two hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes next to the hundred and forty hundred fifty thousand dollar homes, the comps are going to be better. Um, without being a real estate agent. I just know that from experience that the comps will improve the area. And then anytime, anytime that we can talk about USD 453 taxes and improvement, I think that's a plus for the city. Again, that's my feedback with my highlight. If it's rezoned, we're only talking about two more houses and they can start building tomorrow with two less houses. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Linda? Yeah, I know Linda wanted to speak. Linda, you can, did you have some comments? Linda. All right. So the again, the motion was made to accept the uh, to accept the or to approve the recommendation for rezoning. I'm still looking for a second. Sure. Yeah. What? What's? Does she have a motion with her? No, I think she was supporting you. To be honest, Linda, did you want to? Yeah. Linda, did you want to second Joe's motion? Still discussing this as commissioners. I'm still looking at this thing and the greater good. They brought up the issue that 
the city benefits, you know, with $4,000 taxable income and 16, 18 homes. I see the great benefit there. But I'm looking at the greater good and kind of doing a, a SWOT analysis in my mind of the strength, a weakness, opportunity, threats related to this. And I'm aware of the area. And the thing is, regretfully, I feel the city has been remiss to not develop and improve some stuff around here for egress and traffic. And the people are bringing up some valid issues of kind of a bottleneck with, with cars and traffic coming out of here. I, I think that as someone addressed the issue that putting the cart before the horse, and that got my attention because I understand the, the point they're making there is that this area is conducive to houses, but at the same time, it's like, and the, the builders here tonight are proposing to do good control and, and, and due diligence with the area they can train, that they control and what you're going to do. But I think the city needs to get some stuff here with, with the road and sidewalks and some stuff that's then beyond the scope of the builder and have this area conducive to that. And I think that's what the city needs to take a look at this, in my opinion. And then turn right around and this land would be very conducive and to, to proceed with the building of these homes there. I know you build quality homes and I know it value added to what you're doing. It's just that God, things should need to be done and I'm aware of the area and that traffic there and they bring up a good issue there of the traffic flow and the sidewalks and the road there and movement there. It's, it's, it, that's a big issue. It's a big issue in this area. And that's, it's it's, it's, yeah, and that's kind of, it's still my, my one sticking point. Me is, too. I'm telling you, doing, building those homes would be great for the city. Right. Um, but if you're only developing, you're not fixing the bigger problems that are down Quincy. And I, and I think that is going to, you know, it's going to play into it. I mean, I understand the whole 16, 18 home part. It's just until something's done on either end. Right. I mean, that's that's just that's just my feeling. That that's that's just. Yeah, and, and I understand it. I just I just see if if we vote if we were to vote no tomorrow, they can start on 16 houses. We vote yes tomorrow, they can start on 18 houses. Yeah, that I, does not address. <laughs> The traffic that we want fixed because the city's not going to fix it before they build 16 or 18. Therefore, I'm just kind of seeing the, uh, the greater good being. Yeah. And it's really outside the scope of our ability. We can't, I mean, we yeah, can ask right. the city to so, consider putting no, money out of it. So, yeah. you know, I, I think we're. Yeah. Sir? We're talking. I mean, go ahead. Please, we have a question here in Africa. Okay. Go ahead. But I, I, I just would like to reiterate, I think it was Linda's point. Um, especially when you're talking about when the city's allocating. I second. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Okay, it's Linda seconded <laughs> Joe's motion. Thank you, Linda. Hold it, sir. Let's go ahead and finish quick, and we'll take it. Well, I, she makes a it makes an excellent point when you're talking about how the city allocates dollars and and where services are extended and things are done. I, yeah, it'd be great if they were mostly visionary and put things where houses weren't yet, and and those. But what what really ends up happening is. When you have homes in an area, that's where the services get extended. I think the, I mean, I, the best chance for the power issues and the other things to be taken care of is for us to develop the area, bring new families into there, clean up the part of Quincy that we're in front of, put a sidewalk in there, and put a little more pressure on the city to handle the rest of the issues. I, that's my, you know, they may not like that me saying that, but that would be my opinion on the whole thing. All right. Thanks, sir. All right, so. The motion to approve has been made and has been seconded. So I'll do a by name. Uh, we'll do a by name vote. So Commissioner Widauer, yes or no? Approve or disapprove? No. No. Okay. Thank you. Linda, yes or no? Has the motion been seconded yet? Yeah, you seconded. Yes. Thank you. Pass. I vote affirmative. Thank you. Okay. Yes. James? Yes. Thank you. Joseph? Yes. Thank you. Chris? No. No. And I'll vote yes. With Sherry's not here, so she obviously will have a vote. Right, so the motion will pass. We recommend approval for the rezoning of. As stated in the staff report, rezoning of, um, sorry, I get the name right, 
1440 and 1460.c. Right. Right. Thank you all. Now, second issue. Or so second. this will, um, just for anybody online, this will go to the first uh, city commission meeting in February uh, for them to uh, take a, a vote to place this on first consideration ordinance at that time. And then I think before it goes to the city commission, if people have an issue with it, they can address the city commission as well? Yep, they can get in touch with me. Um, a number, of, they already have my contact information. As you saw, we, a lot of them submitted comments. Um, they can get in touch with me or they can get in touch with city commissioners. Their contact information is on the city's website. So just keep an eye out for when this discussion, when this topic will be discussed by the city commission. Mm -hmm. Right, second item of new business is hey, two zero. Yep. Two, sorry. I'm sorry, 202102 sub or the Adams Valley preliminary plat. Staff report, please. Okay, so thank you. This is the accompanying preliminary plat for the um, rezoning that was just discussed. Um, so you've already seen this lot layout. It's 18 single family lots um, with an average size of 9,647 square feet at the property located at 1440 and 1460 Quincy Street. Um, improvements to Quincy Street will be required as part of the development process and uh, utilities will be extended as this is developed. Um, and just to kind of let every know, everybody know the process. So once a preliminary plat is approved, the applicant will have to come back in with a final plat, which will come to the Planning Commission again for approval of the final plat. That final plat would then go to the City Commission for acceptance of the public uh, utilities since we'll be needing to dedicate easements as part of that and then prior to recording the final plat the engineer will be required to submit a public improvement um, design plan to our public works department to be reviewed and approved that will address all of the utilities um, so we will be doing the review of that design of those utility systems prior to any plat being recorded questions for staff Questions for the applicant. All right, so we have three options with regards to uh, approving this preliminary plat. We can approve the preliminary plat. Pl I'm sorry, plat. We can deny the preliminary plat, or we can table the issue for additional information or consideration. Uh, take a motion for what you think we should do. I'll make a motion. We approve the preliminary plat for Adams Valley Valley South Division. Mm -hmm. I second. Thank you. All right, this motion made and motion seconded. I will do a by name roll call. I get back to the list. All right, so uh, Commissioner Weedauer? Yes. Commissioner Bozenek? Linda? Vote yay or nay? Linda, we need your vote on the preliminary plat, yes or no? You can keep going. And, and she's gone. All right. So, Commissioner Diggs, yes or no? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Burks? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Linda, you back? And Commissioner Murphy? Yes. Thank you. I vote yes. Yeah. Thank you. And I vote yes. <laughs> All right. So, it approves, we've approved the preliminary plan. I believe there is no more new business. No more new business. Um, we do have an item or two for February, I think, Michelle. So we'll be back in February. All right. So I'd like to close the, um, the meeting, our, our regular scheduled meeting for today. Thank you very much, everybody. You can turn off the tape recorder. Right. Thank you. I would ask if you got a chance, mm -hmm. uh, could you talk to us a little bit?